Welcome back with me today is Dave Min, and Dave is running for the State Senate, the 37th District, which is, of course, this one. And I'd like to welcome you back. Uh, you were here a couple years ago. Thanks so nice to me, see Tim. you again, Appreciate sir. It. Thank you for having me. Yeah, first, let's get a little background sure. on you. You are um, a UCI law professor, right? I am. Yeah. Uh, I teach contracts and banking law, but uh, I'm not one of these people who spent my lifetime in academia. I actually had a career uh, about 10 years uh, in, primarily in public policy okay. before coming to UC Irvine. How long have you been at UCI? Uh, so we arrived in 2012, okay. um, and my wife is also an academic. She teaches with me. We're excited to settle down. I'm a native Californian. Uh, we had one kid at the time. We're in Irvine. You know, what else do you do in Irvine but have kids? So we have yeah. two more right after that. So we've got yeah. three young ones today. Well, I, uh, my um, older daughter's boyfriend is finishing up UCI Law. And, so that's uh, hot. Uh, and, uh, I mean, it's fantastic. Um, one of the things <coughs> that uh, we want to get into, of course, is while you're running. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you are at UCI Law, mm -hmm. and uh, which is can't get much better than that. Yeah. Why do you want to change careers? Uh, well, I don't know if it's a change in career. Uh, I just view right now as, as a, a time when politics is so important. And you know, we're all focused on what's happening in Washington, DC. There was a big mm -hmm. Democratic debate last night. Uh, right. Donald Trump, I'm sure, is making headlines on Twitter right now as mm -hmm. we speak. Uh, but I think in Sacramento, there's some important things that have to be done. And, and you know, my own concern as the father of young children as the son of uh, immigrants who came here to this country from Korea in search of the American dream is mm -hmm. that we have, are, as a country, as a, a community, are losing our way and we have to get things back on track. Now, I've spent my career in economic policy, mm -hmm. uh, researching and writing around these areas, and I think we, you know, there's a saying from the Greeks I like to quote. Uh, it's some, something like this, a civilization is great when its elders plant trees whose shade they know they'll never sit in. Uh, that's an ethos mm -hmm. of investing okay. in the long sure. run, and we've just gotten completely away from that. Uh, everything right now is about what we can grab out of the system right now. Uh, we've robbed the future to pay for the present, and we have to get back on track. Uh, the American dream is not what it used to be. Uh, the pathway to the middle class is not what it used to be. This country used to have uh, world-class infrastructure. We've, mm -hmm. Now we look like a third-world country. Okay. Uh, we're not fighting ch uh, challenges like climate change. Uh, we're not investing in education. Uh, I think we have to get back on track. If we don't start that process now, uh, I fear for the future that my kids are going to inherit. Uh, they are not going to inherit the same country that we got. They're not, they don't have the same hope and optimism okay. that I got to And of course, with. you're running against uh, the incumbent. <coughs> John, John Morlock, yeah. Right. And uh, uh, he is, uh, I, think he's, um, I think he's been on the Senate, I don't, I'm not sure how many years now. Uh, he won in a special election in 2015, okay. but he's been around politics in Orange County for yeah. a really, yeah. really long time. So you're running against him, and uh, what is the, the biggest differences between? Uh, sure. So uh, obviously, he, I should mention you're a Democrat. He's a Republican. Sure. Well, there's the first. That, there's one difference. Yeah. Uh, he's a lot taller than I am. Yeah. And he's yes. got a beard. And, and he's I can't got really, a beard. I can't yeah. really grow <laughs> facial hair. Uh, you know, I, I think the differences are, um, y you know, around ideology. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you know you can look at a few different things. He's he's not just a Republican. I think he's on the extreme fringes of the Republican parties in many mm -hmm. respects. Uh, in 2016, he introduced a resolution welcoming Donald Trump to the presidency on behalf of California. Uh, he's the only person that put that bill out there. He had no co-sponsors. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's necessarily where Orange County is. He's got an A rating from the NRA. I'm endorsed by the Brady campaign to end gun violence. Okay. Uh, he's someone who said climate change is not real. It's, he has not seen any evidence that uh, human behavior causes what we're seeing with our planet. Uh, I'm endorsed by the League of Conservation Voters. He's someone who's voted continuously against education. Uh, I am someone who's endorsed by the California teachers. Uh, so I think those are some of the big differences. Um, but I think a lot of it goes to you know, our attitudes on investing in long-term uh, okay. outcomes. Uh, my wife is a teacher, but mm -hmm. let's look at it that way. Sure. And the other way to look at it is it's also a union. Yeah. So, and people look at those two different ways. Let's talk about, you just mentioned education. Mm -hmm. And although you're not in the Senate yet, mm -hmm. if you get elected, you'll be dealing with things like this. Mm -hmm. And um, just to get your views on things, we have Prop 13 coming up, and we want to mention that, first of all, the Prop 13 that is coming up now is uh, for education. We'll get to the other one if we have time. Uh, this is a $15 billion bond measure, mm -hmm. 35 years, I believe it's 35 years. Yeah. So in total, they're looking at a payback of $26 billion, give or take. Yeah. The first question is, this is what people, you know, this is going to saddle people 35 years 
of taxes paying off this bond. Mm -hmm. We have, a, I think, a $21 to $22, 22 billion dollar surplus. Mm -hmm. We have the state lottery system. Mm -hmm. We have all this. This is, this is a huge, huge yeah. amount of debt that's going to be put. You just, you just said, well, we're paying for today. Yep. Putting out money today that's going to have to be paid mortgage the future. Yeah. Isn't that what this is doing? Uh, yes and no. And so first of all, I just want to be clear. I, the Prop 13 you're referring to right. is not related to Proposition yeah, 13, that's what I was which, saying. Yeah. which keeps a cap on our property taxes. Uh, this Proposition 13, and there's a lot of confusion about yeah, this. There is. Among, I was there talking is. to a teacher the other day who, who was asking about this. They should have called this <coughs> something different. Yeah, right. they really should have. But yeah. Proposition 13 that's on the ballot this year uh, has to do with a bond measure to, yes. for school facilities. Uh, I want to be clear, uh, this is not something that a state senator votes on. This is an okay. initiative that the voters out there will right, vote on. Right, right. Um, that is true. And that so, is true. Uh, you know, this is, uh, I guess what I'd say first and foremost is should I get elected, I want to be clear, uh, I'm not going up there with the intent to raise any kind of taxes. Okay. Uh, this particular bill, you know, is one that tries to find funding through a bond measure for mm -hmm. uh, facilities. Uh, to refurbish, build new schools, uh, repair some of the schools that need repairing. Uh, and I guess my view is this. Um, there's some investments that we can make right now mm -hmm. that are more valuable over the long run than others. Right. Uh, and I think our schools, I think everyone would agree, public education uh, is at the foundation right. of future progress, mm -hmm. of future growth. Uh, you know, my own parents benefited from education in this country. I benefited from public schools in this, right, in this state. Uh, and so I, I think investing in schools is, is a good thing on net. Now, we'd have to look at the particulars. We want to make sure we're not overburdening ourselves with debt. Right. That's not payable over time. We have to be fiscally responsible. Um, but in the abstract, I'd rather spend money on rebuilding schools, hiring teachers, things like that. Uh, than on you know things that have less long-term carrying value. Uh, you know the, the classic saying, "School's not bombs, school's not prisons." Right. There's some truth to that. That you know when we build prisons and we spend a lot per capita mm -hmm. on prisons, uh, that ends up having a longer-term cost for us. Uh, does not return a lot. Whereas when we invest in schools, we know we're producing you know mines, we're producing uh, future workers, and we're going to need that workforce going forward. Uh, it's a type of investment that's easy to get away from as a politician because who cares if we pull out money from schools in the short run? It's okay. just something we see over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But we need responsible leadership up there that's going to push for those long-term investments. Okay, let's, let's um, <coughs> change the subject a little bit sure. because if you are elected, mm -hmm. uh, you will deal with this massive homeless problem. Yes. And the governor uh, just yesterday, I think it was yesterday, uh, one of the things that he came out and said, and something that uh, we kind of got away from is, you know, in essence, he said, maybe we should relook at the fact of getting these, uh, putting people, not incarceration, but years and years ago, uh, there was a policy you could uh, place people in some sort of an institution, for lack of a better word, yeah. for mental health, a lot easier than you can. Now we got away from that and look at the problems. And mm -hmm. the governor now has even said, you know what, we may need to rethink that. There are people out there that it should be easier mm -hmm. to sort of force them to get help. Than right now, you can't do anything. Yeah. What's your view on that? Homelessness is a vexing problem. And we're yeah. starting to see this become a real problem even here in Orange You're County. Absolutely right. uh, yeah. And one of the problems is related to a lack of affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, too many of my students who come out of UCI law, they're making pretty good salaries, are having trouble finding a place right. uh, to four people are living, four or six people in a two bedroom apartment mm -hmm. to make ends meet. Um, we have a real problem in this state that is also a problem in Orange County of a lack of affordable housing. That's causing people. Uh, to have to resort to measures like uh, living in their cars, crashing on friends' couches. Uh, that's the first step to homelessness. So when we think about homelessness, uh, a lot of us just think about people who are on the streets, uh, right. who have mental health issues, who are talking to themselves. Uh, but by the time they're at that stage, they've probably been homeless for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, the first steps of homelessness are the ones we never see, uh, people that are kind of invisible to us they're, they're, because they don't want to be seen. Uh, what we have found repeatedly, what the data has suggested, is that homelessness is a very costly problem for society. Uh, it does make sense to take interventionary measures. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I need to think about what the data says. And so one of the things I would like to do uh, is really study this problem comprehensively. I, I support Governor Newsom's um, you know, prioritization mm -hmm. of ending homelessness in the state. Uh, I think the next steps are, let's, let's figure out what the experts say on this. Let's start commissioning some serious research. What are the solutions to homelessness? A lot of people think it's this housing first approach. 
a lot of people are, are advocating uh, more uh, forced uh, institutionalization of people on the streets. Uh, let, let's talk about this. Let's think about what the right measures are, and let's refer to okay. data. Uh, I can tell you all day, what, here's what I think, but at the end of the day, what I want to do is refer to people who are experts and refer to the science and data. Uh, that's how we're going to solve problems, not through my gut feeling on, on okay. issues. Okay. Of course, affordable housing, that's a hard one. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it really is. It means high density. A lot of people don't want that. That's yeah. No yeah. right or wrong, yeah. right? That, yeah. That's Orange a really County hard in particular. one. Particular. Yeah. Uh, what are uh, What are some of the other? Uh, pick out maybe one or two key uh, issues, and sure. uh, I know we're you know if we have time we'll talk about the other Prop 13, but you know that's not sure. for a while from now. I'd rather hear what What are the two things? That, sure. I mean, gun violence is a father of kids. Yeah. Uh, I. Um, it, it is remarkable to me that we have tolerated this level of gun violence. We are now right. used to. Uh, news stories almost every day of another mass shooting. Uh, I mm -hmm. grew up, um, at, I was an NRA junior marksman. People, you probably wouldn't expect that <laughs> looking at me. Um, you know, I shot rifles, 22s, um, but we were taught gun safety first and foremost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were taught responsible gun ownership and gun mm -hmm. handling. Uh, I think that, unfortunately, the gun lobby has gotten far away from that. It's become right. an advocacy for selling more and more mm -hmm. uh, weapons of war that really don't belong on our streets or should belong under mm -hmm. highly supervised areas. Uh, again, I think this is an area where we should be commissioning studies. How can we reduce gun violence the way that we reduced automobile accidents right. and fatalities right. a generation before? Uh, we should be thinking about outside-the-box solutions. And we should be ending subsidies that support uh, the proliferation of more guns. Okay. So I've called for an end to the gun shows at the Fairview, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, at the uh, Orange County Fairgrounds. Uh, I think that's a, a very small step, but it's one of many steps okay. that we'll have to take to, to really solve the problem here. Okay, so a very comprehensive view, not just yeah. like throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, water, we've got to be smart. We have to look. There is okay. a Second Amendment. We have to be yeah. you know, mindful of that, but the, I think there are steps we can do to reduce sure. gun violence that are consistent with the Second Amendment. All right. Uh, we got another couple minutes. Sure. Uh, another issue <coughs> that's uh, on the top of your list? Uh, sure. You know, climate change is a, is a big one mm -hmm. for me. Clean air, clean water, protecting our coastlines. I guess you could lump that all in the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, my view is we have an obligation to the next generation to preserve mm -hmm. A, a world worth living in, uh, a world that has beauty and natural beauty, uh, and clean, clean air, clean water. These are things that we take as birthrights. They may not always be there. Uh, so we have to be smart about, uh, you know, our, our, you know, thinking about our future. Uh, one of the things I would like to explore in the state senate <clears throat> is finding ways to spark uh, a green technology boom. Why not here in Orange County? We have all of the elements one would need uh, right. for a, a booming Silicon Valley type economy mm -hmm. here around green technology, batteries, renewables, carbon capture, things like that. Uh, we've got a great research institution that I work at, UC Irvine. <laughs> uh, and so plug, why, plug, plug. why not think about ways that we can uh, facilitate research, development, commercialization of that research, uh, exporting that research. California, by the way, is responsible for only about one and a half percent of the world's carbon emissions. Right. Yeah. So we can't move the problem all by ourselves, but right. we have shown the world that we can create products that, that are you know, technologically advanced that can help solve problems. Why not do that with uh, our environment? Uh, we went and put a person on the moon in seven years when we made it a priority. Yes. Uh, we can solve the climate crisis with if we devote our resources and, and time to it. All right, very good. And UCI is certainly a great research okay. institute for sure. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Yeah, great it. to have you on. And uh, maybe I'll see you again. Yeah. And of course, more information, very easy, DaveMinn.com. <coughs> you can find out all about his views there, a little bit more in depth. And uh, If I could make one last sure, plug. Sure, of course. Uh, your, your ballots are in the mail right now. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah. So you have to vote by March 3rd. Consider yes. voting for me. It's an important election. Uh, I think the future of our country is potentially at stake. California has got to lead right now. If we don't lead as a state, who will? We're the fifth largest economy in the world. We're the most populous state in the country. Uh, right now, I view us as being in a crisis as a country. Our state has always led. Let's continue to do that. Let's put people up there who want to lead our, our state. All right, Dave, hey, thank, thank you, you very Ken. much. I appreciate it. We'll be right back.